Okay, I know a couple of people that are still joining in with one event just to that out. But why, why don't we begin? So I'm Adam Hajan, I'm the Dean in the College of Science and Engineering, and it's uh, good to see you all here today. So it's my pleasure uh, to introduce today's uh, our, our seminar on Internet of Things, Adoption and Business. Arthur Bartonian is uh, nearly two decades in the industry, mostly in the UK, Europe. I'll let him uh, go through his uh, experiences with us. But I think Internet of Things is a good example of uh, uh, already widespread technology at a cross-section or intersection of, of several fields. So uh, engineering technology, the, the world of data science, uh, adoption and, and value in business and society, some of the challenges, and the four degree uh, from the art group. So thank you. Thank you, Ram. Thank you, Ram. Um, so I think uh, five minutes already uh, gone through, so we can start. Um, my name is Artur Bartayan. So I spent around 18 years in IT industry. Uh, worked ac uh, across EMEA in the leading global companies like Dell Technologies, EMC, and IBM. And for the last seven years, I also work as university professor and teach courses around digital transformation, uh, IoT, and uh, data science, actually. And I want to thank Aram for this opportunity to come here and give uh, this short uh, 50 minutes lecture around IoT. It's a pleasure to be here, and I thank everybody for coming. And today we're going to talk about uh, um, practical adoption of IoT in business because overall technology is not only the thing we would like to discuss, we want to think how to use technology to change our everyday life. And definitely IoT is one of the things that will make and already making our life different. Um, to start with, I want to start with this guy. This is Albert Einstein. He is a famous radical physicist and also he is famous for being a professor in Princeton University in the United States. And once his, uh, his, his like, secretary was preparing documents for the upcoming exam, and he was quite surprised that the exam questions were absolutely the same that were used a year ago. So that means that the same students needed to answer the same questions one year in a row. He came to Einstein and asked, why do we ask people the same thing? Why don't we change the questions? Einstein answered, there is no problem with the questions. Within this year, the answers changed. So at the time of Einstein, physics was developing really rapidly. And the things that were quite obvious and common at a certain period of time changed very fast. The same thing is happening with IT industry today. So if someone tells me a year ago that we'll have artificial intelligence that can write texts like a real human, I can say it never happens. But it's actually, actually already there. If someone tells me that we'll have IoT devices that will be smaller, very small, and will be smaller than a smartphone or smaller than a chip, I will never believe in that. And that means that New technologies have new perspectives, and we need to understand that things will change really fast. And let's talk about IoT perspectives. According to the recent study, in 2030, we'll have more than 29 billions of IoT devices connected. That means that it's much more than people live today in the world, and some predictions are more than 70 billion. So, we see that more and more devices will be connected to a world wide web and making you know, things different. And what is also happening, we see that IoT market in 2023 will reach 1.5 trillion United States dollars globally. For instance, the grain market worldwide is 1.2 billion in 2023. So we use IoT the same that we use grain worldwide. That means that this market is not something that is a uh, small one on something we don't see, it's everywhere. The next thing is about the IoT jobs. According to the study in 2020, uh, the average number of jobs listed per month in IoT exceeds 50,000. 
So every month we need at least 50,000 new specialists who work in IoT globally. And five years ago, this number was less than 5,000. So 10 times more. And uh, we see that there is a big potential to find a great job in this industry already now. Uh, about the data, uh, it is predicted that by the year 2025, IoT devices will generate 79 zettabytes of data. The total amount of data generated by this time will be 175. So humans will do about 100. Devices will do 79. So that means that devices do almost the same number of information that a human can do right now. So these are the perspective and means that IoT is definitely changing the world and applications of IoT in business can be pretty much different. And for instance, I will show you this photo. What do you see in this photo, guys? Any suggestions? What is that? A refrigerator. Refrigerator. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little bit dark here. Maybe Something. it's not. Something. Liquids. Underground. Underground. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, actually, yes. We see. We see. Um, we see. We have seen a man here, right? There was a man here, a smartphone in his hand, some food shelves, looks like a food shelf, camcorder, metro station. It was actually a metro station. So this is actually South Korean metro station. So these guys are going into the train, and this is not a real shelf. This is just like a digital shelf. It's not a real one. Uh, it's South Korea because in North Korea, I'm not sure they have trains or retail stores or smartphones or anything like that. So, but it is one of the UK companies who just started a great project to implement new way how people who have less time and they want to save time on their commuting uh, in this particular example. So a person, when he's waiting for a train, can use his smartphone to order something to his house, to his work, remotely, at any time, and just um, get it delivered by the time he comes to the needed location. And this is not a real, like, refrigerator, you mentioned it. This is just a photo of different e items that they have, uh, you know, been printed. And, you know, this is just a light, and you can use a phone, use the QR code, and make the transaction with a minute app. So what we didn't see here is what we have the video face recognition. So it checks what are the items are most you know, important for the customers at, w at which they look more often. So we can track uh, their, like, uh, their, their, their maybe ideas, they, they view how they consume things. Uh, we also have the optimized supply chain. So that means that the things listed here are based on different things. For example, we check the time of the year, uh, you know, the weather conditions. For example, if we are in winter times, there are some maybe hot dishes. Maybe if we are in summer times, there are some cold drinks, whatever. Um, of course, weather data is controlled by artificial intelligence. And we, of course, have the support of e-commerce. So we have full integration with smartphone. And the funny thing that all of that is possible with IoT because there's no humans, you know, interacting. There's only devices that collect some information and make things like that happening uh, possible. So an IoT, and when we talk about IoT or like Internet of Things, it's not a thing, it's a concept. Concept of many basic things, of course, because all of the things are pretty common today. We have different devices, camcorders, smartphones, whatever something that we need to track. We use different sensors uh, that collect data, provide this data through connection uh, to the IT infrastructure, where we use business intelligence to make different business advantage decisions. So, and this is just a very brief explanation of what is IoT, but before I go to the real definitions and maybe some other examples from business, I will give you some history updates about IoT. Well, the funny thing that the first guy who ever thought about it was Nikola Tesla in 1926. He had an interview with Collider Journal, Collider Magazine, and he predicted that in the future, 
the whole earth will be converted in a huge brain. Of course, he talked about the internet. And we will have special um, instruments that we'll be able to use. And they were so small that we will be carry them in our pockets. So he predicted smartphones and he predicted the global internet. And he predicted that we could interconnect each other in seconds uh, in uh, respective to the distance. So this guy was pretty smart. I think he comes from the future, most probably. Uh, but the term IoT, maybe the first implementation of the classical IoT was in 1990. It was done by MIT guy, John Romke. He connected his toaster to the internet, and made the first thing. He was actually the creator of TICP protocol. He just used this protocol with this toaster just for fun. The first guy who ever implemented the idea of Internet of Things was Kevin Ashton. And he actually was the one to make this term widespread. And in 2008, 2009, we saw a new big change in the world. We moved from the Internet of People to Internet of Things. So the number of devices connected to the Internet exceeded the number of people connected to the Internet. So, and this will be growing much faster if you just remember the first slide I talked about. So, what is the concept of IoT in general? So, IoT is a single network that connects the objects um, of the real world and virtual objects around us. So, it's just like we try to connect something from the physical world and the, and the virtual world, try to collect some data, and try to integrate it somehow to make different business decisions. And there is also some other explanations that is this large growing set of billions of devices operating on networks with global um, potential. And when we talk about IoT, um, we also talk about connection and many things that integrate. And some features of IoT can be coined into different spheres. We can talk about Wireless sensor networks, it's widely used in many use cases, for example, in agriculture, which I will be talk a little bit closer. And radio frequency identification, RFID, it's a very popular thing. I think you have, you have, you have seen RFID, I think, even 20 years ago, maybe even, even more than 20 years ago, but it is now much more widely used in many spheres, and I will give you some examples of uh, RFID application in retail, especially in new types of stores that doesn't have any cash, uh, cashiers. Like, so cashly less uh, stores that is using RFID technology. So let's talk about the wireless sensor networks. Well, wireless sensor networks is a distributed self-organized network with different sensors, rotors, acutators that interconnect between each other with a special radio channel. And this type of IoT applications is designed to remotely monitor something, some event or some specific phenomenon, for example, weather conditions, humidity, like air, pollution, whatever. So you can monitor even the application that you can connect the camera to some kind of, uh, you know, things you try to, to, to check. It will also give you understanding what is happening. Uh, this technology is used to solve many practical problems related to monitoring, management, logistics, whatever. It's widespread and I will give you practical examples where it's applicable. RFID technology is more of um, identifying objects automatically. So a RFID tag helps to track the object in a specific location or in a specific, you know, like... Uh, specific, uh, specific um, how to say, it, area maybe. So for example, when we talk about clothing retail stores, each cloth piece of clothing has a special RFID tag that is tracking the location of this clothing inside the store. If you take this clothes with, without paying, without removing the tag, you know, you'll be, you know, the, the cashiers, the people who are in the store will be informed that you have <laughs> Stolen it. So this is the first maybe classical implementation or FID. It's many other implementations here, but this is the thing that is making quite obvious to track things inside 
separate locations and we use it in many other ways also. What are the main means of IoT? So what are the main important things, features that need to be implemented to make all of the things working? The first one is identification means. So we need to use some of the technologies that will identify physical objects in virtual world. So for example, RFID tag is a, is a type of identification means. QR code is a type of identification means. Barcode that have some information about the product without maybe have any some analytics is also at, is, can, can be identified with this type of thing. Uh, the second thing is a measuring means. Measuring means helps to use these identification means, uh, transfer them to machine readable data like zeros and ones to binary code that can be then implemented to the next stage which is data transmission means it's, it is wireless or wired connection that is used to transfer the data to the next stage which is data processing means so that means that we have special identification tools like QR codes, RFID codes, radio signals or even classical MAC addresses that we use to make measuring means to transfer that to machine readable information then we move it with wireless or wired connection to our data center where we can use the data processing technology. This is just basic means of IoT. And what are the pros and cons of IoT adoption? In general, IoT gives a lot of benefits because it can, we can manage remotely a lot of things. Uh, allowing we have full control of remote operations from distant locations and many companies have benefits from that without even having people present in some locations. For example, in oil and gas industries, IoT is widely spread because some companies are looking for oil in locations with very bad weather conditions where people cannot be staying for the whole day and even it's very distant location. And IoT is one of the tools to help them track that everything is working properly. Also, uh, IoT helps to collect analytical data that we previously were, were unavailable to find. So new data can be uh, generated. And actually, IoT is one of the key sources for big data today because we can find new um, amount of data coming from different sources. And it helps a lot because new data meets new ideas, new things, and new maybe strategy. What are the cons of IoT? The first con is uh, there is a lot of devices today and there is no common standard to integrate them into one network. It's a big problem because you need to invest a lot into developing things across uh, different technologies. Maybe someday in IoT will, will, there will something implemented like USB because USB changed the way we <laughs> use devices today. It's everywhere. So, IoT still doesn't have any USB <laughs> connection. Most probably it will be sooner or later. Uh, and it's maybe one of the spheres where we can all work because definitely this, will, this is still in demand right now. Many things connected to IoT uh, lack, uh, lack energy and they need energy support all the time. It means that could bring some, uh, you know, some issues to the environment, most probably. So we need to have a lot of energy to support the IoT. That is very important. And the last thing, which is uh, very popular among like movies of the 90s, like Terminator or like The Matrix, that a big, huge network that controls the entire world will sooner or later kill everybody. So, <laughs> so but it's of course it's maybe just, 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 just. Uh, just a joke, but of course IoT together with artificial intelligence can do things like that possible and most probably devices are connecting between each other and no humans can control them. Someday they will do things that we cannot imagine and already this is on the way. So let's talk about some uh, industrial applications of IoT and maybe some examples from real businesses. 
So here are some of the very popular examples that is used everywhere. The first one is, of course, IT infrastructure managed power systems. A lot of companies today, especially those working in the solar energy, uh, implementing IT connections to the solar, solar plants because it can easily track uh, the way we can consume more energy or from which location, we can track it easily. In the industrial IoT, when we talk about different you know, manufacturing plants, a lot of IoT devices help to track the performance of different, uh, different uh, aggregators on different things like um, different machines. Of course, electronic cars have a lot of IoT implementations and self-driving cars, of course, are only possible with IoT because artificial intelligence is working only when they have more information that is coming from outside world and IoT is responsible for giving that information from the cameras, from the sensor, from the location, from everything. Um, in analytics during precision farming, I will give a little bit more deeper example in farming industry because it's very interesting how we can implement IoT in making uh, plants more sustainable, more, you know, more effective. Healthcare is very popular right now. Also, I will give a very uh, detailed example on the healthcare applications. In e-commerce, um, especially with RFID technology, when we can track the location of the good, we can track the uh, performance, we can track the logistics schedule and everything. Other examples in smart cities, smart houses, so we can, we can manage the temperature, the lightning, the everything actually in terms of housing appliances. Um, environmental monitoring, so when we can track the weather conditions, uh, we can track uh, how, we can predict some of the things like earthquakes with IoT. We can predict things like flooding with these devices. Military application, quite popular with different drones and actually a lot of things that, from, that we have in IoT today comes from the military application, which is quite common across the technology. A lot of things are invested the first time in the military industry and then they move to the, you know, not, not military use cases. <laughs> Let's talk about the IoT in agriculture because more or less, if we talk about Armenia as a great country, it's a country where we can use IoT to, to make better agriculture. Uh, there are some of the examples like climate condition monitoring. So we can use IoT weather sensors uh, that collect various data about the weather conditions and we can choose the appropriate crops that could be sustainable in this weather condition. Here are some examples of real companies who provide these devices like All Medio, Smart Elements and Pikno, if I, if I read it right. So I will share this presentation. The links are inside the presentation. You can check the website, what they're offering. The second option is precision farming. Very popular to make, you know, our crops sustainable. In precision farming, we check how crops uh, are growing. We can check their health. We can check the humidity. We can check the soil condition, the lightning, everything. And with that knowing, we can adapt the conditions to make crops growing faster and more healthier, and more fruitful. So here are some of the examples uh, of the companies who provide these solutions like CropX, more five and others. So also precision farming can be applied to greenhouses, which is very popular. So you can tr track everything inside the greenhouse uh, from, from humidity to temperature to lightning and adapt it accordingly. So precision farming helps to keep crops alive longer and it keeps crops much more fruitful. Uh, cattle management. It's not maybe agriculture, but actually it's connected. So we can use different devices to track the animal's location, their health, their temperature, if they are ready to maybe to eat or not. So we can track their condition all the time. And 
that means that we can check if there are some animals that are, you know, not healthy, if they have any problems, if they are to distant locations. Some of the examples are here, it's Kohler and S here. Uh, agricultural drones. Uh, we can use special drones that use surveillance. Uh, they can help with planting crops, fighting pests and infections and other applications. So here's a real example of which is, can be, of course, applicable to Armenia because I like Armenian wine. And <laughs> I just wanted to take some of the examples from the wine production. Uh, well, it's not Armenia, but it's also a country where wine is good also. It's Spain. Uh, I'm not very good in Spanish. I may not name the right name of this you know, winery. It's Pago Ailes, maybe it sounds like that. But this is uh, a winery that actually implemented IoT in the production of grapes. So uh, they track um, the health of grain, uh, grapes, they track the humidity, they fight against pests, and what are the real implementation they have? They have 25% increase in quality of the product by implementing IoT. They reached 30% uh, uh, return of non investments by applying IoT, and the production costs reduced from 10 to 50% depending on the vintage of wine. That means that only applying that technology, you can make a product better, cost cheaper, and much more um, you know, effective. So there will be a link here. So after the presentation, you can go there and just read it directly. It's a great example of precision farming, actually. It's not a winery, it's precision farming, most probably. But you know, I just wanted to give you some example like that. So, healthcare, very popular today because healthcare is something that we all see today because we all go to the medical uh, organizations, we track our health and we know that many things, if we could make some things remotely, that would be great because uh, I have been in, in, in the healthcare, uh, healthcare in the medical center like two weeks ago not two weeks ago, two months ago, sorry for that. <laughs> for that. But uh, I stand more than one hour in a, you know, in a queue because many people was coming there and just, uh, if I could do something remotely, that would be great, I think, for everyone. And IoT is definitely one of the sources to make things remotely because it can help to re remote monitoring, to, 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 to remote monitor the patients. Uh, so we can remotely connect uh, IoT devices to medical organizations and track the patient's heart rate, pressure, temperature, glucose levels, anything. And this will give us understanding how we can help people much easier. So, for instance, this like, Fitbit device is a great example of heart rate tracking and it tracks it all the time and it's connected to the World Wide Web and I think Google who owns the Fitbit knows everybody, everything about my heart rate and that helps actually Google to provide a better service for me I don't know which but definitely they will use it someday uh, the same things comes for tracking depression and mood monitoring uh, I have read recently an article that we are in a pandemic of depression today because Many people, due to social network, are affected by depression and mood problems, and they don't know about it. So this is just a very common thing, and if we can track it on the earlier stages, the treatment is way better than in the, in the, in the stages where we are already in depression mode. So, and there are some devices that can track and collect the data and predict the mental state. So we can, we can actually know if a person have depression or not, or have a pre-depression condition, for example. Uh, third application, ingestible sensors. It's like eatable sensors that we can put inside our body. And we can track a lot of things like stomach pi, pH levels, uh, sources of internal bleeding, many things. So it, it's used widely to you know, to, you know, to help people in different uh, stomach problems, 
whatever. Rani Therapeutics is one of the examples of the companies that work in this sphere. Of course, the last example is robotic surgery. Well, I, I think I've seen that in the film in the 90s. I don't know. I did not remember the film, but there were some small robots inside the human body that was, well, I think it's you know, one of the new films today is Ant-Man, but it's not a robot, but the idea is pretty much the same. So very small IoT robots will be inside the human body, and they will make some surgery inside the body, and that will help people to recover faster. There will be no errors, no problems, and really there. So Stryker Corporation is providing such robots for some uh, blood-related problems, so, so, so to say, blood system-related problems. Uh, so another example is healthcare, more or less understandable. So let's take another example of IoT in retail. So I have already pr provided you an example of a retail store in, in Korea. So let's talk about Amazon Go, which is a new type of retailers across UK and US. Around 31 convenience, conven in, in, in around 31 uh, convenience stores opened right now by Amazon. And Amazon is actually did this thing. Each customer can enter the shop uh, with a QR code that is generated, generated in his Amazon app. So there's no people inside the store. It's um, uh, absolutely uh, cashierless. So you don't have any cashier there. You can check the goods by yourself. You just enter the store with a QR code. And once you're in the store, you just take any goods from the shelf. And all shelves are equipped with RFID technology, with video cameras, with waiting things. Once you take it from the shelf, it is inside your virtual cart. So, which is connected to your Amazon account. And you can put everything you want. Uh, and if you, go out, you want to go outside, you use the QR code. And the sum that is in your virtual card automatically deducted from your account. So, you just, like, you just can go there and go outside. If you don't have enough money, of course, you will not get out. So, <laughs> so, so it depends. So, uh, so, this is the idea how we can implement IoT. Uh, without maybe using people. So most probably, this is the future of all retail stores someday. So we will come to the retail store without anybody and just pick the goods and go away. But of course, there are good examples, but maybe they're not that popular. Maybe they're not that game-changing. So I'm not sure if I have Amazon Go store nearby. I will go there every day. Most probably you see that there's only 31 stores in the world. It's not a very common thing, so it's a very new thing. So what are the barriers to IoT adoption? Why we don't see that much applications in business today? So there are several reasons for that. And one, of course, is the lack of value propositions. So we don't see the full value of IoT today. And companies uh, who do IoT are mostly early adopters. And they really don't see any value sometimes. So finding the right value is an important thing. Security concerns. We collect all of data. And we need to protect this data. And protection of this data is not only protection data itself. It's protection from the outside. So if you have a lot of network connected to your data center, someone can use this network to connect to your data center and steal something from you. So that's a big problem that we need to solve. That's why not everybody adopting IoT because of security concerns. The governance structure of the companies. Companies are very bureaucratic in decisions. And many companies have no, maybe they have will, but have no power to fight the bureaucratic process to adapt IoT fully. The next problem is business playing prototypes. According to the statistics, 70 to 75% of IoT applications doesn't bring any value. They are unsuccessful, so they can't be used. That means that only 25% of real examples of those you have seen, others are not applicable. And the last thing is quite common is that we lack 
qualified specialists in IoT. So we need people who will work directly in this sphere and develop the industry somehow. Uh, so what are the IoT careers today which we can pursue and which are in demand right now? I showed you that we have 50,000 job listings every month worldwide. But which professions have the highest demand? This is what I investigated myself and just want to give you some examples where we can go if you want to pursue a career in IoT. The first one is cloud engineer. So it's the guy who actually connects digital um, middleware with databases and collect the data from IoT devices. This, this guy is connecting the cloud to the IoT devices. He builds some software and database to make these all things working. So it's most probably a developer, so, so to say, but he, this is his specialty. Uh, device designer. So many devices need to be designed from scratch because um, there is not so many applications that we can use in business. So, and design the IoT device, it's like, like designing a car, for example, or de designing a computer. So it's something that is very important because on the one hand, you need to design software in the right way. On the other hand, you need to design hardware in the right way to make it cheap, uh, lower energy consumption, everything. So these people are really in a big need. Do you mean designing FPGAs or even? Yeah, more or less like that. Uh, material specialists. So those guys are responsible for finding which uh, which materials should be used for IoT devices to center them. Maybe it could be uh, materials like plastic, like <laughs> for example metal, even it could be organic materials, it depends on the use case and this is very important to do so. Embedded engineer, so those guys are responsible for developing and implementing software to the embedded devices, so it's more like a software guy. And a network engineer because we work a lot with networks and managing the networks are very important. So these are maybe main use cases, of course it's not the only career path you can use in IoT, but those are the most demanding careers, and average salary for these careers exceeds $100,000 a year, which is pretty high for IT specialists, and there is very low number of qualified people here. So, potential career in IoT uh, is very good for those who want to do one of these jobs, most probably. Um, I think I'm coming to a closer end for my presentation. Um, and I think in the end of my speech, I want uh, to give some words for the uh, younger generation. I'm not that old yet, but of course, people who are studying right now have great perspectives. I want to give you the thing, guys. I think that you should take these opportunities. You should learn new things. Uh, like emerging technologies, which IoT, of course, is. And you should use this knowledge to develop um, a career path that will bring you to closer to your vision of a successful and happy life. You should work hard and change the world. Because if not us, who? If not now, when? So it's the right thing to do, and maybe IoT could be a great option for you. So. This is all from my part. I want to thank you for your time and passion. I want to thank Aram for making this presentation happening. I'm ready to answer some of your questions, if you have any. We have, I think, around 15 minutes. So, any questions? Yes. You mentioned that you worked for IBM and Dell. I have a question about product designing. How they were uh, designed product, like how they were to design a product. For example, they have a need for something or they see a client and uh, uh, like taking probability of something. Well, of course, there are many ways how you can design a product. Of course. Um, uh, and if we talk about Dell, because I've spent around 10 years in Dell, Dell is designing product on the cloud.
client responses. So, of course, they collect information from their clients and try to adapt their product design based on that. And they will have some different solutions in IoT. If we talk about, they have embedded devices, which can be used for IoT in telecom industry most, mostly. Uh, and have, they have special uh, IT infrastructure that will be used at the like data processing means for IoT. And the design is also based from the customer's uh, you know, response. So they have a big number of customers who purchase different solutions already. So in taking them uh, as a, you know, like asking them what will be the new product you would like to buy is one of the ways they make a product. And of course they make some products based on their market research. So they check what the competitors are doing. They try to assemble it. So many ways to do a better product depending on what maybe strategy you're looking for. But if we take the largest IT corporations, they have very close products in their portfolio Mostly it's because the customers want this product to be there. So of course, at the same time, they copy and paste the same solutions. So, and because all of them have the same maybe hardware inside, the difference is also in the software level. Any other questions? Yes. I was involved in the initial discussion and conversation about the future of the IoT, and that I remember that one of the more one of the most important problem was the security. Yes. So could you tell a little bit about the problem now? What kind of trends now and uh, so what can they expect? Thank you. Yeah security um, um, you thank you for mentioning the security concern and actually it was one of the things I mentioned why IoT is not developing that fast, security concerns. Uh, when you open your data center to a wider network uh, with maybe all of the devices connected, uh, those hackers can use this network to get uh, to your data center somehow. Because uh, the level of protections of IoT devices is not as good as the level of protection of the inside network nowadays. So I think uh, there is still a big demand of companies who will provide full security solutions for IoT. Uh, and those options that we have now still not maybe that effective. What I what I heard, I'm not maybe too much in the security market, but I have seen that many companies uh, with whom I work didn't implement IoT because of security concerns. They said I don't have enough software solutions to protect my, you know, that to protect my network. So maybe this is a. Gr a potential trend that we will need security solutions for IoT. This is one of the trends where we can invest our time. Maybe new solutions can be coming from here. So that's maybe what I can comment from that side. I'm not very good in solutions on security, but I think there are some, but very not, not, not many, I think so. So is it kind of personal problem, yeah? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yes. For example, about Google, Fitbit, uh, who say that Google will help you, otherwise not sell your data. Google. I think he's uh, already selling. <laughs> yes. And the solution of one that we have already is blockchain, actually. And uh, you create a centralized ledger, and in this case, uh, hackers cannot steal your data, it's because your servers are decentralized. Actually, it's one of the solutions possible. You have got a great example. But blockchain is, that's why crypto is so much in trend, because uh, you can't steal, actually, if you don't have private keys, etc. And maybe for IoT, blockchain should be in addition, because I'm also working in the IoT sphere. I have a health startup in NPM. Oh, nice. Yes, that's why we're considering now to have patient data via blockchain. That's a great thing, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that I didn't thought about it first time it's about yeah but about but it's a great implementation but it gives you the opportunity to protect the data it will not be able to be encrypted or somehow so yeah blockchain is a very good example of course i think that all of the things will be connected like iot blockchain and artificial intelligence this will be one big digital story interconnected with each other and of course security issues because we work with data 
we want to work with data, with some kind of data. Security issues are very important at some point. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I'm struck by the um, distance that IoT is creating between the natural environment and the human kinesthetic experience. So you mean what will be Touch. this? What will be the distance? I, I, what I, what I, my concern is that the Internet of Things, given some of the examples, is distancing humans from their kinesthetic experience. Ah, of course, yes. And that that is a dimin diminishment of human capacity and the value of the six senses. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, I absolutely agree with that because the more we go into that, you know, digital world, the more we lose some of our senses or even change our behavior. For example, there was a great example of the effectiveness of social networks of a human mind. Um, on average, uh, before the implementation of social networks, the time span for the reaction, if you like something or don't like something, for a human was 12 seconds. So within 12 seconds, if you see something, if you like it, you will continue watching. If you don't like it, you will just go away. After social networks implementation, this time span is now nine seconds, or even eight seconds. So much lower. For example, fishes, you know, fishes have nine seconds, or the same <clears throat> thing. So we are not that attentive than fishes, and of course, any implementation of new technology will affect our senses and will distance us from different things. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, is it good or bad? I don't know if it makes our life easier. Uh, well, look at, look at the positive feedback loop, what you just talked about, relative to isolation. And we know that depression is a consequence of isolation. Yes. So you're using a technology to assess the depression, which is based on isolation, but are you not amplifying the isolation by using the digital technology? Yeah. Because of, I could see an, a chatbot being used to communicate with the person who indicates that they're depressed, which then is multiplying the opportunities for the depression. Yeah. Yeah, this, this case in depression, if we remove the social networks, we'll solve this problem. But we'll solve it with an IoT device instead. So, absolutely true. Maybe it's because everybody wants to earn money from people. So that's why we are not banning the social networks, like we ban, for example, drugs. For example, because social networks is the new type of drug, my, my, my personal opinion, because it changed uh, the way we communicate, it changed the way we live. Social media networks. Yeah, social media, I, I believe. It's different from social networks. Yeah, social media, I'm sorry for that. No, that's okay. Social media network, yeah. <laughs> that's important thing, yeah, because social network. Yeah, so I think that it, it is a new way of consuming something like, it's like maybe in the future, uh, maybe there will be some restrictions for that. Maybe, maybe. It's already been imposed, for example, on Facebook, there was some imposition on bad cases in the European Union because it affects people, mental state, definitely. Um, for it's good news that people aren't going to the Amazon Go store. <laughs> well, they are, maybe they're not going because it's not that widespread, right? Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's maybe the problem of uh, sometimes you implement a technology that is not in the right time. Maybe so, like maybe it's not time for that yet, or maybe nobody needs it because, like as I mentioned, seventy-five percent of IoT implementations are not successful because it's not it's not needed. So, like maybe uh, maybe even uh, some of the examples like. Uh, I have already mentioned are not applicable that much for many countries. 
it depends uh, what you want to get and what is your purpose. Yeah, like. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question and for your, you know, for ideas. Any other questions? Yeah, actually I actually haven't thought on discussion, so I'm just going to intervene for, for a moment because this is a topic which I've been thinking of lately. Um, and I've been wondering why VR is not that popular right now because I thought that it could become an enormous, um, very fertile space for actually treating mental uh, diseases, right? So for example, if a person is I don't know, phobically um, scared of public speaking, right? You can create this VR space and place him actually into the space to treat this. So um, when you talk of, what do you call this? Of um, IoT devices. IoT devices, yes. I think there are two sides of the coin. Yes, social media networks and IoT may lead to isolation and depression. But on the other hand, it may lead actually to treating this, right? So, like, a great, yeah, uh, maybe we can develop also IoT into actually treating something that that in the first hand was caused by itself, you know. So, like, it leads to depression, and then you do something to treat it. So that's debatable. Debatable. Now. Depending what it is, yeah. Questions. Uh, is there some estimation about the total market size that IoT creates, and is that number growing? Yes, it's growing. It's according to the recent studies. We worldwide we spent 1.1 trillion United States dollars on IoT in 2023. That is projected. I gave the example that, for example, the grain market, all the grains worldwide, it's 1.2 trillion. So it's like, we use the same amount of grain as we use IoT today. And it's on the growing scale. Uh, it's growing, I think, uh, double digit grows year over year. So most probably we'll see it much larger sooner. Thank you. No okay, so thank you, Arthur, and thank you, everyone, for a good. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much.